That's how we're filling our camper up. This little pump works good. There it is. <laughs> we ran our well dry. It looks that way. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Kathy. I'm Rich. And we're building an off-grid earth sheltered house here in the Adirondack Park of New York State. The cement guys just left. All the cement was poured in the footings for our massive retaining walls. And they just removed all the forms. And they also got a materials list ready to go for tomorrow to start building the retaining wall forms. So we don't really have a lot to share with you this week. And we thought, because we were hosing these down for the last few days, that it might be a good idea to share some information about our off-grid water and how we've drilled it, fracked it, pumped it for the last five years. So they were able to use uh, the casing for the first 20 feet and then everything after that was solid bedrock that they just drilled through. And then we got down what, like 200 feet before we hit a little bit of water? Wasn't enough flow. We kept drilling. We kept drilling. And drilling. And drilling. We drilled 680 feet down, which is pretty deep. And we only have a little less than half a gallon per minute yield. Uh, Optimally, I guess we're looking for a minimum of five gallons per minute. So after that, we made the decision uh, to crack the well. The guys felt really bad, but they also felt confident that if they cracked this well, that they would be able to get a better flow. It was a big success. We went from half a gallon a minute to five gallons a minute. The well drillers actually use the exact same principles as the frackers for oil and gas. However, the well drillers do it on a really, really small scale. We're talking a really small private well. They only go down 50 feet past your wellhead. So in our situation, how deep was our wellhead? 20 feet. So they went 50 feet below that. So when they hydrofract, they really only went down 70 feet. Our well is only six inch diameter, right? Right. And they only pumped 2,000 gallons of water, fresh, clean water with nothing else no in. No chemicals. So again, a really small scale, nothing like the hydrofracking for oil and shale no chemicals are involved. We didn't even feel it when the rocks cracked. We were right, standing there right no there. There was no rumbling or anything like Nothing. that. Nothing. The gauge went to about 500 pounds for a few seconds and then boom, the dropped right off. We got about five gallons a minute now with that. So after that, they put a pitcher pump with about 30 feet of... Black pipe, you know, the black flexible pipe with a little check valve on the bottom of it. And then we were hand pumping that into the trailer. And we have this little pump, it's a hand pump, with a little fresh water hose cut piece attached to it, which we stick right in the tank on the back of the trailer. And it actually pumps fast. That's how we're filling our camper up. And then you bought that little battery operated. You got there. <laughs> this is a battery operated liquid transfer pump from Harbor Freight. Ready? Okay. Here you go, look. Oh, look at that. There it is. It's working great. Wow. It's working. 
Oh, that makes it so much easier a tour. We were able to pump that water from the jugs a little into, faster. A little faster <laughs> into the camper to fill it up. Well, that was fine when we were only visiting for weekends and holidays. But in 2021, when we moved here permanently, we needed a better solution because we needed a lot more water. So we bought a 35 gallon tank. <laughs> I'm just so excited to be able to have a hot shower. I don't care what it takes. And we used a little 12 volt battery operated pump that was capable of five gallons per minute. All the stuff we need? I don't know. <laughs> Cool stuff I have. And what was really cool about that is you ran that using the battery from the ATV. Right. The wire reaches. Okay. Let's see if it happens. One 1,000. It's already coming out. The water is looking nice and clear. Beautiful. So that's a plus. And we would transfer that with the same pump into the trailer. This little pump works good. It was a really great idea. It was easy and it did work a lot faster. The well was seasonally artesian and before we could build the house in 2022, we had to remediate the water problem. So we had to install a drain. There's runoff everywhere. And today we are finally gonna try and take care of the artesian overflow on the well and also hook up the pitless adapter for the main feed for the water. If all goes well, we'll have that pump dropped in and we'll have running water by the end of today. So we purchased a soft start well pump system. That is 400 feet down in our well, and we temporarily set that up in our shed as a pump house. And we ran it with a Predator 6500 watt generator. We were able to run a hose all the way down to the trailer. So anytime we wanted water to fill the trailer, we were able to just start that up and fill the trailer really quickly and then turn it back off. All right, I'm gonna start the generator. Stand by. Standing by, over. <laughs> Nothing's coming out yet, but I hear noise. Here it comes, it's pumping made it a lot easier. Basically all we had to do was fire up the generator, pump the water, fill the trailer, and then turn the generator back off. Yeah, it was great. Wash all the mud off of everything now. <laughs> there it is. Done. That's it. You're done. Pull it out. <laughs> well, one thing we did right, it's, it's this well pump. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. And we were able to use that water all summer when building this for the shotcrete. They needed water that day when they were doing the shotcrete on the dome. We ran our well dry. It looks that way. Wow. Well, we did run that all day for hours and hours and hours. And then after the dome was finished, we literally had to water it for 28 days straight. I'm gonna water the house. So we ran that generator and that pump oh, a lot. When we poured the foundation, we put a four inch sleeve in the slab. So that would be able to accommodate our well pipe and our wire coming into the house. 
for its final resting place. So when we were finally able to move it, they dug like a trench. You guys ran like the wires and everything, right? You right. and Steven. The well being dug. There it is. And that comes up inside the house. Right. We covered it up with some extra foam and buried it. And got the all the machinery for the well pump hung on the wall in the utility room. And we got our 6400 watt solar system up and running to power the pump. And it's been working great ever since. Pressure is amazing. It's a soft start, it moves right. up slowly and uh, doesn't draw a lot of amperage when it's running. So that's perfect for us. We have plenty of water because that pump is so far down in the well. Even if it's only filling at five gallons a minute, it's 400 feet deep. Six inch pipe every foot and a half is a certain amount of gallons times how many feet we have. We got plenty of water on, on reserve. There is plenty for us to use on a homestead for our personal use, for animals, and for gardens. But even so, we do have future plans to do some rainwater collection between the solar panels, the garage roof, and any other roofing that we do end up having. That water won't go to waste. So we'll have plenty of water because water is the most important thing on any homestead. That's a lot of money, but I'm 58, Richie is 60, and we wanted to do it right. We wanted a well pump that would last a very long time, constant pressure, 10 gallons a minute, all the water we need, fresh, clean, wonderful. And fixing the artesian well problem. So we're here on the homestead and we have a mud hole mess. But the entire reason that we have this big mud hole mess is because our well is artesian. The mess that it created especially when living in an earth sheltered house was not something we wanted to deal with every year for the rest of our lives. So yes, a big investment to start, but very worth it in the end. So that's our off grid water story from beginning to end. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy and I'm Rich and we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks, but simple doesn't mean easy. And we'll see you on the next video. Remember that pool we bought last year? And our garden? It was a rough winter. <laughs> you think we could get that working, honey? Yeah, we could open that pool back up. <laughs>